So now that the dust has settled on the latest Nintendo Direct, we have a pretty clear look at what the Switch is going to offer, at least in the first half of 2022 in terms of games. And there, there's a lot of games. Your wallet is just going to be absolutely destroyed by this. And this, these are games just that we know about so far. These are the games that have been announced thus far. So we know that there's going to be more stuff added to it. Now, this is a list and a little infograph made by someone over on Reddit named I Eat Dragons. It basically takes that Nintendo image that they like to put out about upcoming games and that makes it a little bit better I feel so we're gonna take a look at this graph We're gonna take a look at all the games that are coming out talk about the games that I'm super interested in and just show you guys Why the switch is going to be a massive beast in 2022? All right, so we are going to start out in the month of March since February is almost over. I'll have a link to this infograph in the description box down below. Once again, this was made by I Eat Dragons over on Reddit. So credit to them for making this, but let's take a look at March here. So we got Triangle Strategy. We got Hack GU Last Recode, Chocobo GP, The Cruel King and the Great Hero, a new Gal Gun game, Phantom Breaker, I don't know what that is, Persona 4 Ultimax, which is the fighting game, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Battle Course Pass on March 18th, Kirby in the Forgotten Land on March 25th, March 22nd, Rune Factory 5, March 29th, Crystar. Now, looking at this list of games, I'm going to tell you guys the games that I'm interested in. I am interested in Triangle Strategy, but I'm not super interested in putting like hundreds of hours into it and i definitely feel like this is the type of game where you have to put hundreds of hours into your playtime, and that's fine i know there's people that love rpgs like that but for me like my time is a bit more limited nowadays but i might end up checking this game out chocobo gp i'm gonna keep it real i'm really looking forward to this game i love stupid kart racing games and this looks like a stupid but fun kart racing game like it looks like there's a lot of different characters you know based on final fantasy stuff the power-ups look really cool there's online play as well so i think that's going to be a lot of fun obviously the mario kart 8 deluxe booster course pass will start on march 18th we're getting over 40 new tracks added into the game between now and the end of 2023 so there's going to be a lot of replay value in that game uh, i'm kind of interested in the persona 4 game just because it's a fighting game i think fighting games are a lot of fun and you know i might end up checking that out and then of course Kirby and the Forgotten Land. This is honestly one of my most anticipated games of 2022 because I, I love what they've done with this game. I love all the crazy stuff that you can do in this game and I, I just really like it. I love the aesthetic of it. It looks like it's a bit more open world and you know it's more 3D than a lot of the 2D Kirby games that we've been getting, which I love those 2D Kirby games, but I feel like Kirby kind of needed a shot in the ass and I feel like this is going to be the shot in the ass that Kirby has needed. So March, a very strong month and these are just like huge mainline games that actually have release dates keep that in mind because i'm sure there's going to be more games we'll talk about the upcoming march games for march of 2022 in an upcoming video but yeah definitely a lot of content in march and then it just steamrolls right into april we've got lego star wars the skywalker saga chrono cross the remake the radical dreamers edition advanced wars one and two reboot camp 13 sentinels aegis rim i don't know what the hell that is star wars the force unleashed which of course is the upscaled Wii version of the game that does include motion controls, Zombie Army 4, Dead War, and Nintendo Switch Sports. Now, out of these games, I am going to check out Chrono Cross. I never really played Chrono Cross back in the day when it came out on the PlayStation 1, and I know there's a lot of people that enjoy it. I think there's more people that enjoy it just because of the name Chrono, because they assimilate it with Chrono Trigger, but I'm definitely interested in checking out Chrono Cross. I like the new graphical style. There's a lot of people bitching that, like, I don't know, it's too, like, high resolution, and, you know, some of the, the pixels look wonky in their opinion, but you can switch back and forth from the original art style, so that's fine. Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, I do want to check it out. I'm not showing the game because, for whatever reason, the Lego games get, like, instantly claimed on freaking YouTube, so I'm not going to mess with that. Advance Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, definitely checking out this game. I absolutely love Advance Wars and the fact that they've added in a lot of new stuff into this, the ability to create your own maps and the ability to play online, that is a day one buy. And Nintendo Switch Sports, like, I don't think you understand. I don't think you understand. If, if you are not around for Wii Sports, like, you, you don't understand what this had. Like, everyone loved Wii Sports. Everyone. Everyone from, like, dorks to, like, your hood rat people to, like, everyone in between. Like, I would have people come over and play Wii Sports 
and it would just be like the most diverse crowd of people in the world playing Wii Sports. So I feel like Nintendo Switch Sports is going to bring that same sort of sense of community and that same sort of sense of togetherment because it's just a simple pick up and play game, but you can get really good at it. And I think that's what adds a lot of fun into it. Of course, the fact that it's going to have online multiplayer now. So, you know, my friends near and far, I can play with them. Definitely looking forward to Nintendo Switch Sports. And once again, I think April is a very solid month. Now, yes, some of these games are multi-platform games like Chrono Cross and the Lego Star, Star Wars Saga. But even if you take away those games, I feel like Advance Wars 1 and 2 and Switch Sports are very, very strong titles. Now, scrolling down the list, we have May with Vampire the Masquerade, Swan Song, Token, Ranbu Warriors, Two Point Campus, and Evil Dead the Game. Out of these games, I'm interested to see how Vampire the Masquerade, Swan Song runs on the Switch. I'm sure it won't be very good, but obviously the big game I'm looking forward to is Evil Dead because it looks like it looks like Friday the 13th and it looks like it's going to have more support than Friday the 13th did and Evil Dead you know they're they're very over the top sort of horror movies but they're classic and iconic movies so I'm definitely interested in Evil Dead the game I probably will get it on multiple platforms I just if you know anything about me you know that I love to just play multi-platform and online games on the Nintendo Switch especially with people that only own a Nintendo Switch because a lot of times you just get these little shithead kids who just like suck at video games and you can just destroy them and it's just so funny to me I know that's a terrible thing to say but I don't care I don't play video games for you know, put the camera on me I don't play video games for a challenge okay i don't want competition i don't want oh that was a really you know down to the buzzer game i want to destroy you from start to end i want you to question why you own this game i want you to question why you play video games online and try to compete because that's just kind of the, the sick person i am i want to destroy you i want you to question your livelihood when it comes to video games and like the switch is the perfect platform for that we also have Don't Starve Together, River City Girl Zero, and Omari coming out in the spring. River City Girl Zero is actually out already. That came out earlier this week. Looks really cool. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but you know, whatever. Uh, moving on to the month of June, we got a very, very strong title. You know, a couple really good things here. We have Demon Slayer, the Hinokami Chronicles. You know, I'm not playing that. Um, and then Mario Strikers Battle League. Fire Emblem Warriors, Three Hopes, AI, The Somnium Files, Lego Brawls, and the Cuphead DLC. Now, obviously, once again, we have two exclusive Nintendo Switch games on here with Mario Strikers Battle League, Fire Emblem Warriors, The Three Hopes. I like my Fire Emblem games. You know, I, I, I love the strategy stuff. I love the turn-based stuff, but I definitely really enjoy the Warriors styles of games because it's just fun to sit there and just mow through hundreds and thousands of enemies at once. And Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition is still my favorite Warriors game to date. Just, I loved all the stuff they plucked from this. Obviously, I'm not the biggest Fire Emblem fan in the world, so some of these things will be a bit lost on me, but still, like, I played uh, Three Houses. I didn't finish it, but I played quite a bit of Three Houses, so I understand the characters and what's going on with this. But Mario Strikers Battle League, this is the freaking... I was literally, I, I don't, I don't get overly emotional when I'm watching like a Nintendo direct. Like I may be like, Oh yo, that's cool as shit. But like, I'm not crying. I'm not like jumping out of my seat and throwing stuff. Like there's, there's people that do that. that that's fine. You know, I understand you got to put on a show for your viewers, but Mario strikers battle league. Like I, I, I jumped out of my chair a little bit and I said, Holy shit, this, this is it. This is the jam. This is a new Mario strikers game because once again, if you've never played like Mario Strikers games during their heyday, they're so much fun. And the fact that they're doing so much stuff with the online portion of this game makes it really just very special, in my opinion. You know, I think this game is going to be absolutely fantastic. And just looking, I mean, just let's look here between March and June, like all the exclusive titles that we're going to get on the Switch. Chocobo GP is an exclusive. Uh, Triangle Strategy, Kirby's an exclusive, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I mean, whatever, you know, that's kind of exclusive, Advance Wars, Nintendo Switch Sports, then, you know, Mario Strikers, Fire Emblem, like, that's insane, that is a lot of exclusive games for the Switch, and obviously, not all these games are going to hit, not all of these games are going to be absolute home runs or anything like that, but just a very, very strong, strong lineup when we're looking at what's going on in July and in the summer. In July, we have the Klonoa Collection and Live Alive. And 
holy shit once again i was very excited for the klonoa collection just some of the best 2d 2.5d platformers that you've probably never played you know it did come out on the wii i believe i still own it but don't try and look to see how much that game costs because it is a lot of freaking money but the klonoa games are awesome live alive once again this was a game that i never heard of evidently it's an old super famicom game that has never been translated but holy shit you know it has that cool visual style that we're seeing in games like octopath traveler and triangle strategy but this hits a lot more with me because whereas like triangle strategy and octopath traveler you know they kind of have that like like 15th century sort of feel to them i don't i don't really know how to explain it kind of like that renaissance fair style to them live alive is from different eras and all the eras are very diverse like you're a ninja you're, you're a caveman you're in the wild wild west like that's awesome that looks absolutely awesome and like i i, I will i will sink tons of time into that game because there you know the surface level is definitely drawing me into the game i definitely want to see some more of the gameplay you know learn about it a little bit more but live alive was honestly one of my favorite things from the last nintendo direct and it's a game that i didn't know anything about i didn't know this game existed until it was shown during this so definitely really looking forward to that august we don't have anything confirmed when we're looking at the summer we have disney speedstorm the monster hunter rise dlc no man's sky front mission first which of course is the front mission remake ko the kangaroo i don't know why everyone's excited for that a new gunvolt game and splatoon 3 obviously splatoon 3 is the big game from here i really feel like splatoon 3 is going to be a july game i don't know maybe it will be august because i don't know it just, it just depends it depends on what we learn about between then and now i think it could be either but I, I i really sort of lean into july with splatoon 3 it always feels like a summertime game you know kids are out of school and stuff like that and the splatoon 3 community is absolutely huge so i feel like you want to sort of maximize it as a summer title so that the most people you know potentially that are out there that want to play this game can indeed play this game looks great from what we've seen i'm kind of curious about no man's sky i know it's available on every other platform but it's like this is a game that probably shouldn't be on the switch and i always have an a, you know an affinity for that i always find them very interesting so i will be checking that out more than likely and then we have september with xenoblade chronicles 3 it's not xenoblade chronicles x i know i know i'm a little bit saddened by that but xenoblade chronicles i mean come on dude like obviously this is for xenoblade fans you know i i like what i've seen so far i, I i'm gonna keep it with a, a buck with you guys i played xenoblade chronicles when it first came out on the wii i really liked it i subsequent playthroughs of the game like on the 3ds and stuff i was just kind of like eh, whatever xenoblade chronicles x i absolutely loved i loved everything about it xenoblade chronicles 2 i never really got super into it i tried i played it for like 18 to 20 hours and it just never clicked with me i don't think it's a bad game it was just not clicking with me for whatever reason but i feel like xenoblade chronicles 3 has the potential to sort of click with me again i don't know like i i will check it out just like i checked out xenoblade chronicles 2 but that's the reason i I never made a video on xenoblade chronicles 2 because I, I i didn't feel like it was a bad game i just wasn't really clicking with it and then hold on to your trousers because holy shit there's a lot of stuff coming out in the rest of the year now this of course are just titles that we already know about lots of exclusive titles we have bayonetta 3 sonic frontiers breath of the wild 2 mario and rabbit sparks of hopes Turtles Shredder's Revenge, a Gundam Alliance game. I thought that game looked terrible, by the way. Taiko no Tetsuin, Rhythm Festival, Portal Companion, Dying Light 2 Cloud version. I wouldn't play that. Neon White, Graven, Star Wars Hunter, Tem Tem, Digimon Survive, Bendy, Hollow Knight Silk Song, Roller Champions, A Plague Tale Requiem, RWBY, Midnight Suns, River City Girls 2, Lord of the Rings Golem, Metal Slug Tactics. I'll take the L on Metal Slug Tactics. I was not here's the thing when metal slug tactics was announced i didn't like it because it was pc only that was my whole big hold up with this yes I, I i would prefer you know a traditional metal slug game but my my problem with metal slug tactics was the fact that it was pc only and maybe i was just kind of masking it and saying oh you know i just want a traditional game for whatever reason but that was my problem with it once it was announced for consoles i was like holy shit, sign me up i'm, I'm now excited about this game but obviously we have to look at some of the top games up here bayonetta 3 i definitely think will be a 2022 game we've seen quite a little bit of it in terms of gameplay of course was not at the latest nintendo direct so a lot of people were like 
ooh, what's going on with that? But I always felt like this was a later half of 2022 game, probably, you know, late fall, early winter sort of era. Sonic Frontiers, you know, there's a lot of questions about this game. There's a lot of wondering, you know, what's what's going on with it? What sort of game is it? We haven't really seen the gameplay from it, but what we've gathered so far, you know, it's just sort of a more open world open-ended aesthetic for sonic the hedgehog which sometimes works and sometimes doesn't but this game's been in development for quite a while so i do have hopes for it and plus i mean i'm just a sonic fan at the end of the day <laughs> man just just make sonic good again please like please like i'm only i'm one of the only people who thinks like sonic forces isn't a terrible game um the legend of zelda breath of the wild 2 i'm not sure if this is a 2022 game like i i feel like it will be I think it'll come out towards the tail end of 2022, but I also wouldn't be shocked if this is a 2023 game, like a spring 2023. I know that's not what people want to hear, but even if that's the case, you know, I think the year is just so strong with just titles we know about. We're obviously going to learn about more titles as well. I think it's a very strong year. I do hope Breath of the Wild 2 is a 2022 game. I think it will be, but I also would not be shocked if it does slip into 2023. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff to discover with this game. We've made videos on it before in the past. You know, what's this traversal system? How am I going through solid objects? How will it affect the gameplay? I think the writing is really on the wall with that. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. God, man, I wish this game was already out. Like, I want to play this game yesterday. So, you know, the longer I have to wait for this, the, the more the more antsy I get for it. Obviously, it is a 2D style beat em up in the vein of the classic Turtles games, like the Turtles uh, games on the NES and the Super Nintendo, and of course the arcade. Yes, I'm counting the NES Turtles games because Turtles 2, the arcade game, and Turtles 3, the Manhattan Project, were actually good games. I didn't really care for Turtles 1, but we all had it and we all played it, and we we're just like, why can't we get anywhere with this game? So, super looking forward to that. But here's my thing Mario and Rabbit Sparks of Hope. I'm saying is a 2023 game. I'm going to go on record right now and say I feel that this is a 2023 game just because it's Ubisoft. And, and, you know, Ubisoft is taking on most of the production of this game. And I just don't feel like this is going to be a 2022 game. I've heard some chatter behind the scenes. I've heard some chatter with, you know, the fact that this game could be potentially delayed. It never really got a release date, just that 2022 window. But out of all these games, I will say Mario and Rabbids Sparks of Hope is the game that will Will be delayed until 2023 yes even more so than breath of the wild 2. i do feel like breath of the wild 2 could be a 2023 game like i wouldn't be shocked but i definitely feel like mario and rabbit sparks of hope will be a 2023 game but even if you're keeping that you know into consideration look, look at the titles man look at the titles these are the games that we know about it is february and this is our lineup of games for february you know compare it to other platforms compare it to what you know playstation and microsoft are doing and it's like there's a lot of switch games coming out like i feel like this year could potentially be just as big if not bigger than the initial year of the switch because obviously it got a very slow start but by the end of the year like you had zelda mario xenoblade splatoon like it was stacked mario kart 8 deluxe it was absolutely stacked but i feel like this year can be just as stacked if not potentially better because you're getting more stuff you're getting a more variety of stuff from both nintendo and third-party developers so a very exciting year i didn't really have anything to talk about today and i just wanted to talk about this i know you're saying where's your horizon zero where's your horizon forbidden west that's the name of it where's your horizon forbidden west video why aren't you playing that you hate playstation my copy doesn't come until sunday okay and by the time i play this game nobody's gonna give a rat's ass so i'll talk about it on twitter or something like that so if you want my thoughts on that game follow me on twitter but yes this is the nintendo switch in 2022 lineup thus far stack man your wallet is toast toast so let me know what games you're interested in checking out what games you plan on picking up for the switch in 2022 based on the infograph here like i said this infograph will be available in the description box down below um check it out you know like i said this dude obviously put some time and effort into making this i think he did a very good job i eat dragons i salute you you probably hate me because Reddit hates me, but whatever, man. I'm just I'm just having fun talking about video games. And as always, guys, thank you for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button, like, and share the video. We're over 420,000 subscribers. I probably won't say anything until we hit like 450 or 500,000 because those are pretty cool numbers. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later.